whether it's part of a business plan or as a personal success strategy, building a strong brand is pivotal. But how do we rise above the crowd? Our next guest says the answer is intrigue. She likes to point out that data shows even goldfish have a longer attention span than the average human. In today's Small Business Spotlight, our small business mentor Marissa Levin is here with Sam Horn, author and expert on creating intrigue for your brand and your business. Ladies, welcome. Thank Marissa, you. thanks for bringing in Sam. You are a best-selling author and you've got a new book coming out in 2015 that builds on this idea you've been growing about brand building. You say there's a secret sauce to it. I know some of the secret sauce is being saved for the book release, but what's some of it that you can share with us today? You know, one of the first is based on what Jack Welch said. He said, if you don't have a competitive edge, don't compete. The great Jack Welch of GE, who so many people in the business world follow. What do you think he meant by that? What he meant is that it's easy to get lost in our crowd. There's so many small businesses in each genre or profession. So here's a quick tip on how you can stand out from your crowd instead of get lost in your crowd. Use the seven P so you can become the Uber of your industry. You know, ask yourself, all right, what's my purpose? Get new customers. Who's my person? Let's say Uber says it's Judy, who's a 40-something professional in New York. What are her problems? She can't find a cab in rush hour. She can't find a cab, you know, uh, in the rain and so forth she doesn't want to go out in the street all those problems are barriers to entry now come to premise why does it have to be that way what if there are a better way a faster way a cheaper way and then you come up with with product well we've got the better way then come up with promise we believe in this so much we'll give you a money-back guarantee if you don't like it and then pop it with a name that everyone can repeat and retweet after hearing it once seven P's all of a sudden you're one of a kind instead of one of many that's interesting because I did notice that one of the things you're very good at from your books to your messaging to your seminars is naming the kind of name that captures attention and Marissa I thought of that when I thought of you information experts one of your companies great name thank you give me another example of some of the ways that you've been a big follower of Sam known her for a long time what are some of the ways you've used her strategies to build business so Sam is one of my longest time literary mentors and one of the most important things that Sam ever taught me was think it when you ink it I think that was one of my all-time favorite things as a writer to make sure that every time I come up with a unique strategy, I'm writing it down. The other thing that you taught me is oh, dog. That's so true. I've had so many good ideas driving or in the middle of the night, and they're all gone by the next day. Here's another one. Dog on a tanker. And let me explain what that is. She once shared a story about a tiny little dog that was, that was struggling in the middle of the ocean on a tanker. Everybody cared about that one dog, right? Because people zero in on a specific problem. And that is something that I have always used in my strategies, making sure that I am as specific as possible when connecting with people. What are their specific problems? Who am I targeting? What, what is the specific unique selling proposition that I'm trying to communicate? And those are two ways that Sam has definitely changed my life as a literary mentor. Well, we all can't be as cute and lovable as a dog that everybody wants to save. Uh, so, Sam, another one of the uh, phrases that you use to help people remember what their priorities are, pop. Explain to us, and you've got a whole book about pop that's been a bestseller. What is pop? We learned at the Maui Writers Conference, we gave people from around the world an opportunity to jump the chain of command and pitch directly to decision makers, the top editor at Random House. They would all ask the same question. Ready? What's your book about? The people would open their mouth and out would come infobesity. <laughs> I love that phrase you use, infobesity. We're all suffering from infobesity. That's right. So, so I help people pop their message mm -hmm. in 60 seconds or less so people get it and want it. Want an example? Yes. I would. One of the things I do, I'm the pitch coach for Springboard Enterprises, which has helped small business people get $6.5 in funding. So here's Kathleen Callender of PharmaJet. She says, Sam, I got good news, I got bad news. I said, what's the good news? She said, I'm pitching to a room full of investors at the Paley Center in New York. I said, that is good news. I said, what's the bad news? She said, I'm going at 2.30 in the afternoon uh, and I only have 10 minutes. So, late in the day and you don't have a lot of their time, but 10 minutes can be enough. What did you tell her to do? I said, you have 60 seconds <laughs> because they've heard 16 presentations. Here's a 60 second opening that helped her get Business Week's most promising social entrepreneur of 2010 and all of our viewers can use this for their business. Did you know 1.8 billion vaccinations are given every year? Did you know up to half of those are given with reused needles? Did you know we're spreading and perpetuating the very diseases we're trying to prevent? Imagine if there were painless one-use needle for a fraction of the current cost. 
you don't have to imagine it we've done it and then come in with your precedents and your evidence to show it's not speculative it's a done deal you're ready to deliver it this is why businesses not only all over the country but all over the world have brought you in for pitch presentations so Marissa we've got to wrap it all up but uh, what's one message that you would share with others in terms of pitch that you've learned from Sam so not just from Sam but just in general one of the most important things of any business owner is to always stay in a blue ocean a red ocean is where you are swimming with the CE competitors a blue ocean is where you have done what Sam has suggested and differentiated yourself do not go into the red ocean with thousands of other people. Find a way to differentiate yourself and you will be able to always deliver value. Sam, one of the things that it, uh, publishers say they love about your books and that reviewers say is you have so many of those nuggets of quotes that give people motive and incentive to keep going and uh, we look forward to those nuggets that will come out in the new book. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Richard Branson said time is the new money so we'll keep it quick, huh? And there you go. Well done. <laughs> one of our favorite guests on Washington Business Report, Richard Branson.